In the summer of season two, uh, I had an internship where I worked like from about nine to five like hours. And then I would come home and I would spend six hours playing ranked. And I did that on repeat every day for like two months. I don't think it's necessary in order to improve. I think it's pretty excessive. All right, so this talk, I would normally do like a YouTube video for this and write out a script and everything, but I think it's better if I can take questions along the way. Personally, I feel like there have been two sections to how I've improved as a player. The first in season one and season two, I think I was, I would consider myself a beginner in those years. Like I was still doing pretty decent. I actually had results at the end of season two. I got 25th at EVO actually, and I got ninth place at Canada Cup. Yeah, but I guess the point I'm making is I did have success, but I don't think I was actually that good back then. It was mostly just people didn't know the matchup. 2016, that's season one. I played Ryu, 2017, Colleen. I think when you're a beginner, you're still collecting information about how to play the game. And I don't mean even the basic types of information, like the frame data, the, uh, the, the options you have to uh, punish people's moves. Um, that's all important. If you're if you haven't gotten that, you're definitely still a beginner. I think a, another problem that a lot of Western players have, like people in North America especially, is that we call footsies and patience and neutral fundamentals. I actually think those are like the opposite of fundamentals. I think those are high level concepts that only really start affecting your play once you've mastered the basics. Beginner, what to do? First, I feel like you have to play a lot. I think you have to sort of have this natural game sense. Like you have to play to the point where you can figure out how to deal with situations yourself. Like, the second point is to watch a lot of videos of top players or players better than you. This is useful, but a lot of people think that if you just do this, you can get really good. But if you only do this, then um, you won't be able to develop intuition yourself and you'll mostly just be copying other players. So the combination of playing a lot and watching videos of top players, I think, is what helps you develop that intuition yourself. You should know all of the basics in the game. So these are kind of connected. So this is knowing your options. So um, all of your options within the game, on offense, on defense, all of your combos. This also includes um, more high level basic understanding of high level concepts because you might not be at that point where you're a master of patience yet or where you're uh, a master of footsies yet but you have to at least understand the basics of them um, in order to start improving on them do i feel like it's better to lab or just keep playing people to get better you have to do both I feel like this is a good list of what you do as a beginner and I'll just explain exactly what I did for all of these. There's actually some parts of my practice routine that I actually just could not imagine myself doing anymore. In the summer of season two, uh, I had an internship where I worked like from about nine to five like hours. And then I would come home and I would spend six hours playing ranked. And I did that on repeat every day for like two months. I don't think it's necessary in order to improve. I think it's pretty excessive. But I think it definitely helped me get my game sense. Because while I was playing ranked, I, I just developed strategies for every matchup that I was encountering and taking notes as well. Yeah, I know a lot of 
top players have stories like that where they played like hours and hours a day. Like Punk is saying he played 10 hours a day in Street Fighter 4. I know Infiltration said that he played like 10 hours a day or something. I think it's not necessary in order to reach that level of game sense and understanding of the game, but I think it works. I think you can do it with less hours and very focused practice and um, like very careful, very carefully like watching exactly what you're doing wrong. But playing ranked and paying less attention but still paying attention to what you're doing wrong, it works. You just play a lot of hours. I also forgot to mention watching your own matches. I think you need some amount of this to see where you're autopiloting and going wrong. Could I talk about bad habits people learn from ranked? So I think a lot of people, they're like, play a lot, this is going to work and they just play a bunch of ranked without thinking as hard as they should be. They'll figure out a strategy that works against maybe 80% of the people online. But this strategy doesn't work against good players that know what you're doing. If you're just playing ranked and you're just trying to win in ranked and not trying to improve in ranked, then you could think, all right, this is a good strategy for ranked. I'm getting points, it's working out, but but when you go to a tournament and the strategy only works in the first round against the top player and then it stops working, you haven't improved. You've just figured out something that works against lo like bad people. I talked about play a lot. Now watch a lot of videos of top players. Um, what you want to do is you want to look at Look at what they're doing. Look at all the options they're taking. Like when you're a beginner, you might not know all the things that you can do on offense. Like you're probably not gonna, if you just pick up Street Fighter V, you might not think to shimmy, right? But if you watch a video of a top player and you focus just looking at the player's offense, you can be like, oh, shimmy, that's an option. Delayed button, that is an also a very good option. So figuring out all your options with the, in the game, this is watching a lot of videos of top players to figure out their options, focusing directly on the things that you want to know about. If you want to know your defensive options, go look up a player playing your character and only focus on what they do on defense. I think having intuition about the game is very important and it's something that you can't just naturally have. It's why I think putting in a lot of hours works so well is because you can figure out intuition and be able to find options yourself. Like Punk does not use training mode at all basically, but he's able to figure things out in the game and be just as effective. I think this might sound like it's not that important, but until you go into like a high pressure situation, you're not going to know how that feels. And I think dealing with tournament nerves is a very important skill you have to deal with. Yeah, you definitely have to lab as a beginner. And maybe once you have that intuition, you can figure it out yourself. But even the process of labbing helps you develop that intuition. I think the hardest thing as a beginner is getting the basic understanding of high level concepts. So this is things like patience. Neutral slash footsies. If you play a fireball character, then fireball game. I made a couple videos talking about some high level concepts where I talked about, I guess, reactions and risk versus reward. These are concepts that you're not going to know as a new player. But the way that I found out about higher level concepts is you go to maybe local events and you talk to people and you randomly hear them talking about a high level concept and then you ask them about it. Another problem I think new players have is they ask very bad questions. Like I frequently get questions saying, how do I improve at the game? I can't, I can't answer that for you. Am I just supposed to say anything that could you could possibly improve that. 
But if you ask me, how do I be more patient? How do I, what are some tips you have on the Fireball game? How do you approach decision making in a fighting game? Then I can give you detailed answers. It's also something you can hear about in, in tournament match footage because commentators also know about these con concepts. And by hearing about them and being exposed to them and watching tournament footage, you can see how top players will apply them and the commentators will talk about like, oh, that was a really good decision that this player just made because it did this, it, it, it was less risky than this other option. So the main sources of this information are top players know about this, commentators know about this. So talking to them or watch or watching videos where they'll be talking, you can kind of pick these up. And once you hear about them a little bit, once you get that initial idea, then you can go back and watch videos of top players. If you, if you hear about Fireball game and you want to learn more about it, you can watch videos of like Daigo or there was like a, a match in Street Fighter 4 of Daigo versus Alex Valle that had like a really intense fireball match. And you can, if you have the intent of fireball game in your mind, then you can figure out what you want to look for. The same way, once I heard about footsies, I looked up videos of people talking about footsies. There's a... This video is great. Juicebox made a tutorial explaining um, just the different parts of footsies. It's not just with punishes, but there's other parts to it as well. So I feel like a lot of you guys might not believe me when I say I believe that I was a beginner back then. But we can we can watch a match of me losing. I feel like it highlights it very well. You can just see that I just get out footsied very hard. Right, that was just a drop confirm. You can just see that none of my buttons are hitting him. I think I probably waste V Sugar a bunch because my patience is very low as well. But you see me just dashing. It's not that I don't know what Colleen can do. I do. I know her options. But I lost all of my life to stand medium kick basically. Because my neutral sucked. I had no patience. I just wasted an EX on EX Vanity. I feel like I made my point. You can see how I knew my options. I'm sure I had a basic understanding of patience and footsies, but like I knew what they were, but I wasn't that great at them. At this point, the player knows all their options. It's basically like, no, if you're playing chess, it's like knowing how to move all your pieces. That might be an, an exaggeration, but I feel like that's a good analogy somewhat. You know your moves, but you don't know how to use them really.